Hey, good afternoon. Steve at the Graphite Lab here. Hope you're doing all right. I'm just putting together a little video for you on dynamic pricing. Um, dynamic pricing, it's a feature within Service Titan where you can essentially set your flat rate prices based on your billable hours, right, or your billable rate, um, the cost of equipments and materials to you, and things like add-ons, things like uh, member discounts, things like after-hours fees. Um, so a very, very, very handy thing to get in place because it will, as the name indicates, update dynamically. So if you do additional hours on something, that will then increase the price. If you are going out there after hours and you set it up accordingly, that will then increase prices. If your materials go up by a certain uh, percentage, you don't need to worry about adjusting your prices later. The dynamic rules will catch it. Um, so very, very, very nice thing to have. There are a uh, there are three things that you do need to set up ahead of time um, that do make this a little bit uh, more uh, exclusive than just turning it on and letting this thing run. We'll go through those table stakes today, but. Just know it's not something out of the box that uh, that everyone can use. It is something out of the box that is available to you, though. If you go to your price book and you do not see over here a pricing builder or over here a dynamic price uh, column, reach out to your onboarder, reach out to your CSM and ask them, hey, can we get dynamic pricing enabled? Um, this is free for anybody on Service Titan. However, has not always been a, a part of the uh, the package, so you may have to reach out and get this uh, configured in the event that um, that you came on before this was a standard feature. Um, without further ado, I suppose let's uh, let's roll up the sleeves and dive into these uh, these out of the gate setups that you need to have to make this thing work. Um, now, first and foremost, right, is your billable hours, which as you can see on my account here, this is a dummy system. I don't have a uh, legitimate price book with legitimate hours in it. However, for absolutely anything that you've got in here, you will want to have hours associated to the task because once we get into our dynamic pricing rules, the vast majority of this is what was your cost and what is your billable rate times these hours. So needless to say, anything sitting at zero or even anything that is not a uh, pretty safe ballpark estimate of where it should be won't work correctly. So that is the first piece of this puzzle is you need to go through every task that you want to use this dynamic pricing rule for and make sure that hours exist on this. Just, hey, how many hours do I anticipate this to take? An easy way to do this, especially if you're like me and you're looking down the barrel of tons of zeros, toggle on your edit mode right and in here you can go through and change these relatively quickly right say we're gonna do two here five here so on and so forth right you can just burn through these relatively uh relatively fast in this edit mode without needing to export anything to excel and then re-import and risk any kind of uh errors that you may run into um Beyond that, though, right? So that is the uh, the first piece of the table stakes is you do need to have hours on every task, um, which again, you factor in these are just your sold hours. So estimated how long will this particular task take? Um, now, two other items that you do need to address is materials and equipment that are attached to this particular task. This is going to essentially say, hey, we're not only basing this on a billable rate with the, uh, the hours spent on any given task, but we're also going to add these uh, materials and equipment in so we know what the cost is and we can then um, increase prices from there and mark up however we see fit. Uh, the beauty of it, once you see the, it's, uh, the markup table that comes with this, you are able to go through and just say, hey, I want to go till we have a gross margin of blank. Um, so it's uh, it gives you a little bit more than you have by standard, where you can just mark things up by percentage or dollar amounts in Service Titan. Now you can go by a uh, gross percentage, but you do need to have the materials and equipment linked to any given service item in order for that rule to work as well. Um, 
So those are the two really must-haves. Another thing I would absolutely recommend you square up now before we dive into this any further is member discounts. Just make sure that the categories you have these tied to, make sure that the discount um, uh, percentages are set exactly as you'd like them to because those two are likely to play a pretty big role as we um, go through our dynamic rule builder. Um, Without further ado though, all right, so for this dynamic rule builder, right, we'll just go in here to our pricing builder and you'll have dynamic pricing listed up here. Now, I have no rules to speak of yet, but if I did, we would have a, uh, an edit screen here as well. I'm just gonna jump in and first things first, we can pick which categories do I want this rule to apply to. Um, this is very, very nice because if there are certain categories of your price book where you need to have X uh, profit margin versus others, very handy here. If you'd like these rules to apply for service work, but not necessarily for um, installation work, things like that. You can you can tweak where this lives so it's not just an all or nothing thing, right? Um, I will just for the sake of it, apply mine to these three categories, right? Just for sake of argument. Now, a billable rate, um, this you essentially do wanna capture, hey, what am I paying the tech? What is all my overhead? The billable rate, you know, what, what do you, what do you charge by for the hour? So I'll say for just a uh, sake of argument, 350 bucks, right? Now you do have the option as well. Hey, if I work X amount of hours and do progressive rates, where I say, if I go zero to eight hours, right, this is 250. If I go eight to 12 hours, this is 300. If I go 12 to 16 hours, and you can go through and set different rates based on the uh, duration of hours you got there. But I'm just going to stick to a single rate just for the uh, the sake of example, right? Now, how do we want to mark up our materials and equipment? And this is where we get into if these are not attached to the service task, it's not going to do anything. Um, so fair warning, if I were to put mine on an invoice right now, it's unlikely to do anything. Um, however, for any items that you have where this is combined, I personally recommend you just stick to the standard mark it up by gross margin, right? Where we can say, all right, if we have between zero and call it a $500 material item, I need that to be at 65%. If I have 500 to 1,000, I need that to be at 68, so on and so forth, right? If I have this between 1,000 and 100,000, I wanna to get to a 70. I can then say, make the equipment rules exactly the same, or I can go through and set these accordingly too. However you'd like to, right? You can also additionally, if you don't wanna go gross margin, it is uh, in, in my opinion, it's probably the easiest way to do this to guarantee you're going to get the results you need every time. You could also do percentage markups, dollar markups, or just straight out multipliers. Um, but we'll go with uh, with gross margin just for, for the sake of example today. Now, do I want to include any kind of a surcharge, whether this be a trip charge, a diag fee, you name it. Um, I am going to say here, call it $75. I know it's pretty uh, pretty common. You'll see this anywhere from 69 to 89 bucks. Um, if you did want to as well, you could just do a percentage fee and, uh, and have that include as a surcharge. But just make sure whatever you are putting into, uh, into this, um, this pricing rule, make sure that you've adjusted your job or yeah, your job type sold threshold. Sorry, mouthful. Um, make sure that you've adjusted that. So that this is not essentially going to clear whatever that sold threshold is every single time just by its nature. Um, Moving through, at this point, we can go through and review. Now, this is just my very basic, right? We're taking the hours, materials, and the surcharge, let it ride, right? There's not, not much more to it. Now, if I wanted to modify this, I can now go through, and let me move my noggin here so I can show you this, uh, this preview button. I can go through 
take add-on services, right? Where let's say if a, uh, a certain service is added on, I can discount dollars, percentages, or even time, right? So if I'm adding something and hey, typically adding this service on would tack, uh, you know, I would need to open up an entire AC unit in order to perform this service. If I add it on, we can drop like 15, 20 minutes off it because the system's already opened up as I'm putting these add-ons in here. Um, similarly though, you can go through do dollar values, do percentages, just to discount if you have a, uh, an add-on item in there. Also as well, more convenient after hours. So as we're looking at this, um, this after hours rule set here. You'll notice that we've got a long top. Hey, if your scheduled start time is between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, and if or if, right, because I've got mine configured just for weekends and after hours, my hours at this phony baloney company go from 6 to 6, right? So anytime between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., you're going to be paying me an after hours rate or if you're calling on a Saturday or Sunday, you're going to pay me after hours. So I set mine. Hey, if it's if the job is scheduled within this start time, and I just set it for my off hours, right? Or or if you're calling on a day of the week that we're not there, Saturday or Sunday. Now you can get even further here where you can say, or if you're calling on a particular holiday. So I can say. Well, holidays luckily being observed for us as it is. I guess if this is uh, taking all, we can uncheck any that we won't be honoring, but I'm just gonna leave this thing apply. Then we can either A, increase your billable rate from say my 350 up to a 400, or add a separate item in here that will be after hours charge that is visible, right? That we can then say, hey, we're gonna tack on an extra $100 or increase it by 5%, whatever it may be, right? If I save now, at this point, we are good to preview it, right? So let's hop in here. I'm going to just do a preview and I'll take whatever service that, uh, that we can get, right? Again, keep in mind, this is not a real price book. This is my own dummy stuff. So it's going to be uh, lacking a little bit, but let's see. So I've got mine here set for the labor indicated on a given service. Now, again, I don't know how legit this is for 0.25 hours, 15 minutes to do this, but 15 minutes plus my material markup. I got $40 worth of materials on here. One minus the 65% because that was my uh, proportional markup that I wanted to have when I hit a gross profit margin of 65%. So 40 times one minus 65. The surcharge of 75 bucks, right? At that point, we see where my math gets me, 276. Now, if I have a membership with a discount, go membership 10% off for my gold plumbing membership. Now, this is, at this point, pretty safe to trust that this thing is going to work the way I want it to. All my math is lining up as expected. Now, if I just wanted to see, hey, what day are we doing this on? Let's say I'm going to go on Christmas Day and let's see what that might do. 339 because now we have our after hours markup as well. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about this, I'm just going to close. Once you hit a continue, you'll be asked to test or, or uh, name it. I already got mine on a test rule here. Um, after this, though, you're in good shape. This will now be applied for any price book item you'd like. Now, you don't, you're not stuck with these. You can override them, but the dynamic price is going to be your new default at this point, right? As long as it is within the categories you picked in your, uh, in your price book. If you wanted to get away from that, you've got right here use static prices. Now, good news is this too can be done in a bulk level. If you simply export this guy out to Excel, you change the use static price column from a zero to a one. If you change your mind and you want to go back to just the prices you wrote in, by all means, you're able to do that. However, this dynamic pricing trick kind of sets you up so that you never need to update these again unless you change the philosophy with which you build your price book. Um, please, please let me know if you have any questions about this whatsoever. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I look forward to, uh, to hearing from y'all soon.
Thanks. Have a great one.